blood. Amen. 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 forever 
taking upon himself a human nature. They denied Jesus was forever the God-man and the man-God, or that when Jesus took upon himself a human nature or a body of flesh, he became forever one person with two distinct natures, the full nature of God and the full nature of man, yet never committing any sin. First, first I'm sorry, John 1.1 1, 1 says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Amen. And the Bible says this Word that was that was with God and was God became flesh. And we beheld His glory, the glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. When God the Word, or the Word who was with God, or when Jesus took upon Himself a human nature but never ceased to be God, we need to understand that he became a man forever, but yet he never ceased to be a God. Amen. And so they were teaching that Jesus forever became a man who forever became a person of flesh and bone in order to identify with us who are flesh and blood and bone. Amen. And so they were denying the full humanity of Christ. These deceivers had all the appearance of true men of God, yet they were denying the essential nature of Christ, the Son of God. Let me say it again. They had all the appearance of being true men of God, sounded good, looked good, pooped good, hollered good, could put on a good religious show, but they were denying the very nature of Christ, the Son of God. And because of this, they were deceivers and antichrists. Last Sunday, sermon we taught that one of the ways those who are genuine sons and daughters of God can protect themselves from false teachers who are teaching false doctrine is by loving one another. And prove this by keeping the commands of God. See, the reason why loving one another by keeping the commandments of God protects one from false teachers who are teaching false doctrine is this. If you love God, and your desire is to keep the commands of God. Amen. This means you have a genuine passion for God. Amen. Let me say that again. If you have a genuine passion for God, you have a desire to keep the commands Amen. of God. Amen. And if you have a genuine passion for God, you will have a passion for his truth. You will have a passion for the word of God. And when this is who you are, God will not allow you to be duped by false teachers. Amen. They may be able to shake you for a moment or two, but if you have a genuine passion for God and a genuine passion for truth, and you don't have anything else on an equal par with God nor on the truth of God. You see, some of us, we believe God, we believe the word of God, but we have other things that are of equal value. But when you place God above all others and his word above all others and you really have this desire to live this out in your life. God will not allow you to be duped. You may get shaken off track for a moment or two. Amen. Amen. But God is not going to leave you out there following the foolishness being taught by a false teacher. So, you know, a lot of folks, the reason why they're there is because they really don't have a passion for God. Amen. Amen. Really don't have a passion for the truth of the word of God. Therefore, they become deceived. We saw how John warned his readers in this epistle that many deceivers had gone out into the world. And so there were many false teachers operating during the days of the Apostle John, the writer of this letter. And thus, it should not be surprised that there are many false teachers today. The key point you and I must remember is even though many false teachers and deceivers are in the world today, you and I do not have to fall for them, nor do we have to follow them. Amen. We discussed the fact that these deceivers who were teaching this Jesus, who was a Jesus John never knew. Remember, they looked like genuine men of God. Or they looked like the real men of God. They looked genuine externally for they boasted of doing previous ministry with John. John said they went out from us, but they were not really of us, 1 John 2.19. And so they talked about how we used to do ministry with John. 
They claimed to have approval from John to do what they were doing. And no doubt they had the right sign, and thus they knew how to come across as a true man of God. Shysters know what we like. Amen. Let me say that again. A, 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 a jack-legged preacher knows what we want to hear. Amen. And so they know how to give you what you want to hear to appear genuine. However, the fact that they denied the essential nature of the Son of God, mm. that Christ was fully God and also fully man, yet having no sin, it marked them out as deceivers and antichrists. Mm. And so remember, the same is true today. That is this. It makes no difference as to the credentials a man has. Amen. It makes no difference if he used to fellowship with those who are sound in the faith. It makes no difference as to the social program they run out of their churches. It makes no difference how well they can hoop, holler, and so-called preach for if a man, any man, rejects and denies anything the Word of God teaches about the essential nature of Jesus Christ or that Jesus is fully God and fully man, that man is a deceiver and an antichrist. And so we want to now move on and conclude our preaching and teaching and study. In this letter of 2 John, notice verse 7 says, For many deceivers have gone out into the world, those who do not acknowledge Jesus Christ as coming in the flesh. This is the deceiver and the antichrist. Notice once again, the apostle John says, For many deceivers have gone out into the world. As I said last Sunday, there were many deceivers during John's day. And he was one of the original disciples of Christ. He heard Jesus teach. He saw his miracles. He personally witnessed his death. John says he was there when they took the spear and thrust him through the side. And out came blood and water. And so he really knew Christ had really physically died. Amen. He was a witness that Jesus had been raised from the dead. If these false teachers in John's day were so brazen and bold and unashamed to teach their false doctrines and deceive people in the presence of a man such as John, knowing who he was and what he had experienced, it should be no surprise that there are many false teachers and deceivers today. And so let me further expound on this truth that if there were many false teachers during the days of John, you know, that, that is amazing to me that you would tell John who Jesus is when you've never been with him, but John was. But yet, this is the mindset of the deceiver. And it further amazes me that people were willing to follow the deceiver who had never seen Jesus rather than John who had been with him. Amen. And so let me expound on this, this concept. Many deceivers in John's day should be no surprise there are many today. And what I want to further say is this. False teachers who teach false doctrine, it is a very serious issue with God. Amen. And it should therefore be with us. Yes. And I say this because something dawned on my mind this past week. As I completed a writing project in the doctoral program, I'm currently enrolled. It was a project in which I had to read through the entire New Testament and then outline and summarize every book in the New Testament. After I finished reading through the whole New Testament and outlining every book and I finished uh, Revelation, it finally struck me that as I studied through the New Testament, it came to my mind that almost every book in the New Testament, with the exception of the epistle of Philemon, deals with false doctrine, false teachers, and religious deceivers, either explicitly or by inference and normally both. And so 97% of the books in the New Testament deal with false teachers and, and the false doctrines they teach in some aspect or another. 
Now, to me, that is extremely important, and it seems to me that, you know, God leads the Holy Spirit to do this for a reason. Amen. Amen. And so this fact is, it, 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 it is, it is extremely significant, but this truth lets us know false doctrine taught by false teachers, it is so significant in the mind of God that the Holy Spirit has seen to it that virtually every book in the New Testament deals with false teachers who teach false doctrines one way or another. It also reveals the truth that God wants us to be keenly aware of false teachers who teach false doctrine. He doesn't want any of us to become uh, fall prey to false teachers who are teaching false doctrines. And as we shall see, there are serious consequences. Uh, some of them are eternal for listening to and supporting false teachers who are teaching false doctrines. Amen. What is so disturbing to me in light of this truth? is the fact that most believers could care less about doctrinal truth. Amen. Amen. Most believers could care less about biblical truth. And many, or maybe even most, think the guy who is preaching and teaching sound doctrine is the big bad boogeyman for having the gall of the guts to teach the truth and expose false teachers and phony bishops. Amen. So the climate that we live in today, the big bad boogeyman is the guy who stands for truth. Amen. Amen. And the phony is looked upon as the great man of God. And, and you are the big bad boogeyman. When you have the audacity to stand up with this Bible and, and proclaim it verse by verse, line upon line, and let the truth fall where it may, and let it hurt, or 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 or, 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 or whoever it may, who you know, if you get in the way of the truth, it'll run, it, it'll run you over, amen. And so the guy that does that, that is the problem in the world in which we live today. And he is especially a problem when he exposes your pastor, your bishop, your favorite TV preacher, Stevie Jakes, Eddie Long, Benny Hinn. Bishop McClendon or some of our local false teachers. In other words, the usual suspects. When it comes to some of the doctrinal madness in the church today. See, this is how messed up many or maybe most are today. They think the guy who has given his life and soul into rightly dividing the word of truth, they think he is the villain. And the false teacher is the guy who should be protected. Most people don't go to a church because the doctrine is sound. You ought to because that's what that is important to God. That's why 97% of the New Testament talks about false teacher teaching about that because false doctrine is, 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 is a grievous thing in the mind of God and sound doctrine is important to God. But most folks do not go to a church because the preaching is sound. <coughs> and the pastor teacher of that church rightly divides the word of truth without compromise, but they go for some other thing. Somebody sent me an article this week, I think it was Pastor Payton. For a pastor of a very large church in America, even he's rethinking the mega church. And he got one. And he said the reason why he's rethinking is because he said that the church today has produced not communers with God, but consumers. In other words, folks are looking for whoever got the best church deal. What do you got to offer us? Teach us. Teach us. You, got a, you got a snack bar? Uh, you got Starbucks up in there? You got Chick-fil-A up in there? I mean, I mean, what do you have to offer us? You know, how much parking do you have? And so the church today has produced the consumer Christian. It has produced uh, the what have you done for me lately God kind of Christian. Amen. Not the Christian who desires communion and fellowship with God. Amen. 
And you cannot have communion with God when your doctrine is all messed up. You cannot commune with God when what you believe is false. So most folks aren't going to church because they're teaching this sound. As we shall see, there is a terrible spiritual price to pay. And what is more important to God is not important to us. It's a terrible price to pay and when what is important to God is not important to us. And one area in which this fact is the most important is in the area of false teachers and false doctrine. This is extremely important to God to such an extent that God the Holy Spirit saw to it that 97% of the New Testament books deal in some way or another with false teachers who are teaching false doctrines. The question we must all ask ourselves, is this important to me? Is the plague of false teachers who are teaching false doctrine important to me in light of the fact that this subject is extremely important to God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, the three persons who are the one true and living God? What you believe is important to God. Because God wants you to believe his truth. Ask yourself, is that important to you? Wow. If it is not, you can never have a right relationship with God. If God's truth is not important to you, then I, I go so far to say God is not. Amen. You cannot be right with God unless you want to know his truth. Amen. Amen. And I go further and say you got you, you, you have to want to live it too. Amen. Amen. Notice the rest of verse 7. For many deceivers have gone out into the world. Those who do not acknowledge Jesus Christ as coming in the flesh. John says this is the deceiver and the antichrist. That's amazing that you can be following an antichrist <laughs> and shouting at the same time. You can be following a deceiver and an antichrist and be into the praise and worship. And following a deceiver and an antichrist. See, Whoever you follow, you need to know what he believes. Yeah. You, you need to know what his essential uh, doctrinal foundation is all about. Okay. Because you can end up following a deceiver and an antichrist. And so John reveals in this portion of verse 11, the false teaching which the many false teachers were teaching, it was the lie that Jesus Christ had not come in the flesh. For the text says concerning the deceivers, that they are those who do not acknowledge Jesus Christ as coming in the flesh. As we said last Sunday, to deny that Jesus Christ had come in the flesh was to deny Jesus' full humanity. Mm -hmm. Or the fact that Jesus was one person with two distinct natures, that full nature of God and the full nature of a sinless, real flesh and blood human being. Mm -hmm. wow. Go to deny Jesus' humanity. It was the same as denying the redemption or salvation that is in Christ Jesus. For the word of God reveals over and over and over and over and over that we have been saved through Jesus' death on the cross. And in order for Jesus to die, he had to be a man. Yes. But they denied he was a man. But if he died for us, we just sang the song one day when I was lost. He died upon the cross. I know it was the blood for me. If he was not a man, he could not have died, and he could not have shed any blood. You know, Romans 5, 89 says this, but God demonstrates his own love for us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than having now been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath of God through him. For while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son. Now, my beloved, Notice how these verses re uh, reveal the necessity of Christ's full humanity being needed to save us Woo. from our sins. 
Verse 8 says Christ died for us. If Jesus was not really a real human, he could not die. If he instead was a ghost, as the deceivers were teaching, Christ could not have died for us to save us from our sin because ghosts don't die. Verse 9 says, having now been justified by his blood. The word justified there means, it's a Greek word, dikaiuo, it means, it means to declare a person to be righteous, sinless, and innocent. In light of this, what this means is God the Father has declared the person who is trusting in Christ alone to be saved, he has declared them righteous, sinless, innocent of all sin, and he has done it by or through the blood of Jesus, the blood Jesus shed on the cross. The reason why Jesus could shed his blood on the cross, which moved the Father to declare righteous and holy and innocent, all who are trusting in him, is because... He was a man, and he could shed and give his blood to the Father. Amen. See, if he was a ghost, as these men were proclaiming, he could not have shed his blood in order that God declare us righteous, because ghosts and spirits don't have blood. Amen. But since Jesus did have blood, he had to be a man. Amen. Verse 10 says, for if while if, for if, if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of the Son, the word reconciled, the Greek word katalaso, it is the word used to describe two people who were enemies, but now they are best a friend because they have been reconciled. Amen. All of us who have been saved were enemies of God because of our sin. We were in a state of war against God because of our sin. Most of you don't want to be saved with some sin in the way. Some don't want to give up. You know, I would like to be shaved, but I just can't give up my women's. I would like to be saved, but I just like to drink. I didn't say drink, drink. I would like to say that I just can't give up the weed. I would like to say, but you know, I did that Sunday thing. I just see what separates from God is our sin, and our sin is what makes us an enemy of God because God is holy, God is righteous. God does not tolerate any foolishness and sin, and our sin made us enemies of God. Amen. However, the death of Jesus on the cross is what reconciled us back to God. It is what, it, it, it is what has now made us best friends with God, and the reason why Jesus could experience death and make us friends with God is because he was human, he was fully man, he was flesh and blood, which could be put to death in behalf of men. If Jesus was not a man but a ghost, as the deceivers were claiming, he could not die and reconcile us back to God. Yeah. I hope through this you can see why the false doctrine these men were teaching was so dangerous. Why denying Jesus was not only fully God, but also fully man was so dangerous because it nullified Christ's redemptive work on the cross. Amen. And the same is true if you deny and reject anything about what the word of God declares about the person of Christ. Whenever you deny anything about the person of Jesus, who he was and what he did, you automatically end up rejecting and denying his work on the cross. And if you deny Christ's work on the cross, neither you or I can be saved. But we are all doomed with no hope to spend an eternity separated from God. Verse 8 says, watch yourselves that you do not lose what we have accomplished, but that you may receive a full reward. John says to this local church, you know, you better watch yourself. King James says, look to yourselves. The Greek word for either look or watch, it's bleepo. It means take heed. He said, be on guard, be on watch here. He said, be aware that, that, you, that you 
don't lose what you have accomplished, but that you receive a full reward. What the Holy Spirit through John is talking about is the loss of eternal rewards because one is listening to and supporting false teachers who are teaching false doctrines. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So what John is saying is, is you can nullify all your faithfulness to God mm -hmm. if you are listening to and following and supporting the false teacher and, and, and when you stand before God, you will lose all of your eternal rewards or some will only get a partial reward. See, the Word of God teaches us when believers stand before the judgment seat of Christ, the Lord Jesus is going to hand out some eternal crowns and rewards to believers who have been faithful in their service to Him. Some will get partial rewards, and some will get none. And some will get a full reward. I'm shooting for full reward, amen. amen. 1 Corinthians 3, 13 through 15 states it like this. Each man's work will become evident for the day will short because it is to be revealed by fire. And the fire will trust the quality of each man's work. If any man's work which he has built on it remains, he will receive a reward. If any man's work is burned up, he will suffer loss, but he himself will be saved. There will be no rewards from God for a sloppy Christian life. Teach us. You may be saved, but ain't no rewards coming, amen. Yes. According to what John is led to write by God the Holy Spirit in 2 John 8, one of the ways your rewards for faithful service to Christ can be nullified partially, or as we just read in 1 Corinthians 3, 13 to 15, totally, is by listening to, following, and supporting the deceivers especially those who are denying anything about the person of Christ. See, this is why when it comes to sound doctrine and confronting false teachers, I am hardcore without compromise. I am a raging pit bull. Amen. I don't want to support a false teacher who is teaching false doctrines in any way and then stand before God when it comes my time and he strips all my medals off of me. Amen. You ever see a movie when they're stripping somebody just taking the stripes and they just do it so disgustingly. Amen. Give me them stripes. <laughs> Years ago, before y'all time, they had a show called, was it Brand? Brandon? Brandon. Brandon. Yeah. <laughs> and they stripped him down and then painted a yellow streak down his back. He <laughs> sent him out. I don't want to stand before God when it's my time and he painted a yellow streak down my back. <laughs> then stripping, no rewards. And see, the way you can lose your reward is by following false teachers who are teaching false doctrines. But this is why I try to be as truthful to you in this pulpit as I possibly can, even if it means exposing someone whom I really love to be a deceiver. Because I don't want you to ever follow and support false teachers and end up standing before God when your time comes and it's going to come. And having the Lord strip you of all of your eternal rewards or you only receive a partial reward because you are following fools. Amen. That's really shameful. There are people that I know personally. And they told me, I know my pastor who left the planet to die for They told me, I know we are. But why are you still there? Ministry. Because it's all for nothing. Because you forfeit everything you work for in your faithfulness by sitting up under a man who is now a deceiver. Teach us. I don't want to lose mine, and I don't want you to lose yours. But if push comes to shove, I'll let you, you lose yours. I'm trying to keep mine. Amen. Amen. Verse 9, anyone who goes too far and does not abide in the teaching of Christ does not have God. The one who abides in the teaching, he has both the Father and the Son. This is as definitive as you can get about how serious it is in the mind of God to tamper with the teaching or doctrine of Christ. For anyone who does not abide in the teaching or doctrine of Christ, God says they don't have God. They don't know God. The word of 
Torah, it's a Greek word, mena. It means to remain. Therefore, anyone who does not remain in the teaching or doctrine of Christ, they do not have God. The teaching of Christ, or the doctrine of Christ John is talking about, is the truth that Jesus is one person with two distinct natures, the full nature of God and the full nature of a sinless human being, yet with no sin, as I've already said. If anyone does not remain in this doctrine, John says they do not have God. You know, what this implies is a person can at one time claim to believe the doctrine of Christ. They may have stated in their disbelief in their doctrinal statement publicly on the net. But if they do not remain in this doctrine of Christ, John is very clear they do not have God. Wow. In other words, they are not saved, they never have been saved, but are heretics, false teachers, and apostates. The principle of this portion of verse 9 teaches us is the truth that any time one rejects or tampers with what the Bible teaches about Jesus, and they reject it, the reason why they do that is because they do not know God. It does not make any difference whether they started out right. It does not make any difference that they have overseen the development of a large or mega church. It does not make any difference that they run dynamic social programs out of their church. It does not make any difference that they are dynamic, motivational speakers. It does not make any difference that they can stir up a crowd. If a person does not abide or remain in what the Word of God teaches about the person of Jesus, the Son of God, they do not have God. Amen. Therefore, if you believe in the Jesus who is not fully God, you don't have God. If you believe in the Jesus who is not fully human, you don't have God. If you believe in the Jesus who people are now saying didn't get it all, didn't always get it right, you don't have God. Let me tell you, if Jesus didn't get it right all the time, you are getting right. You're not getting anything right any of the time. Amen. Amen. But child, Jesus didn't get it right all the time. There's a reason why people talk that person, and the reason is they do not have God. Teach us. Teach us. So if you believe in the Jesus who are just kind of stupid, you don't have God. If you believe in the Jesus who now believes that sacrifice on the cross is no longer effective in the salvation of a soul, and therefore he is begging his father, can he work out another way to be saved? I can't help it. You do not have God. If you believe in the Jesus that had an affair with Mary Magdalene, you do not have God. If you believe in the, in the Jesus whose father was really a Roman soldier, you do not have God. If you believe in the Jesus of T.D. Jakes, you don't have God. A Jesus who changes who he is. He was once the Father, and now he's the Son, and now he's the Holy Spirit. See, that, that, that is not the doctrine of Christ. You do not know God. I could go on and on with the truth which teaches that those who do not abide or remain in the doctrine of Christ, they do not have God. In contrast, the one who remains in the teaching of Jesus Christ, the Bible says, has both the Father and the Son. The one who keeps on believing all that the Word of God teaches concerning the person and nature of Christ is the one who truly knows the Father and the Son. Jesus is fully God and fully man. He is a distinct person from his Father. Yet they share the exact same attributes of God. The three persons of the Trinity are the one true and living God. Amen. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. The Father loved the Son and the Son loved the Father. The Father gave the Son, the Son gave his life. And the Holy Spirit implements this great salvation Jesus Christ accomplished on the cross. Yes. If you don't remain in that, if you don't abide by that teaching, the Bible is very clear. You do not have God. I don't care how well of a religious show you can put on, you do not know Jesus. Amen. 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 Verse 10, if anyone comes to you and does not bring this teaching, do not receive him into your house and do not give him a greeting. 
For the one who gives him a greeting participates in his evil deeds. John's statement in the first part of verse 9 applied to the false teachers who prompted him to write this letter. The Holy Spirit says through John in verse 9 that the guy or woman who did not remain in the doctrine of Christ or that Jesus was fully God and fully human did not have God. They were not saved. They never were saved. Because if they were, they would abide and remain in the doctrine of Christ. And this was their proof that they knew both the Father and and the Son. Now in these verses, John, or more accurately, the Holy Spirit, he speaks to the true believers in this church as to how they were to behave towards these false teachers. John says to this local church, if anyone comes to you, if anyone comes to your local church and does not bring this teacher, do not receive him into your house. And do not give him a grief. And the Holy Spirit says the reason for this is because the one who gives him a greeting participates in the false teacher's evil deeds. What we need to understand is the fact that at this particular point in time in history of the church, the Sunday worship service was held in someone's house. Yes. It's strange to us, but they didn't always have church building. They didn't start building church buildings about 300 years after Christ left this earth. So for a long time, they met in houses. And so when the Holy Spirit through John says, do not receive these false teachers into your house and do not give them a greeting, he is saying, do not invite these guys to come preach and teach in your church. And do not even give them a greeting as a brethren in Christ, because if you do, you are participating in their evil deeds. The reason why they would be the reason why they would be participating in their evil deeds is this. If they invited them to speak in their local church, they would be giving them a public platform to preach and teach their lives. And they would also legitimize them by greeting and acknowledging them as a brother in Christ. And that one really got to me. Teach us. See if I'm reading this correctly, if a guy is off, we shouldn't even be calling him bishop. We shouldn't give him a greeting as a brother in Christ. No. Same is true today. That is, if a preacher is denying or he has rejected the fundamental truths concerning the person of Christ. Yes. But you are holding fast to the truth. You cannot invite the false teacher to preach in your church or do a seminar or a Bible conference, nor are you to greet him as a brother in Christ, for if you do, you are participating in his evil deeds, for you are giving him a platform to teach and preach his nonsense. Amen. Or you are giving him the appearance of being a legitimate minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ by saying, he is my brother in Christ. Amen. You know, based on this, if you are a pastor in a local congregation and you are holding true to every truth the word of God teaches about Christ you would never invite T.D. Jakes to preach at your church nor claim him as a brother Amen. I keep telling y'all he denies the essential nature of Christ in his rejection of the Trinity see if you do you are participating in his evil deed of rejecting the essential nature of Christ in his relationship with his father Amen. I had another one here. I, I crossed it out, but I'm going I'm to put it back in. If you are a pastor in the local congregation and you are holding true to every truth the word of God teaches about Jesus Christ, you would never invite my former pastor to preach at your church. Amen. Nor greet him as a brother. When he says Jesus is begging the Father to work out another way for people to be saved, that is a denial of the essential nature of Christ. And the fundamental belief taught in the Bible that Jesus' death on the cross, his burial on the tomb, and his physical resurrection of the dead, it is infinitely sufficient in paying the price for all sin. And he's also denying the fact that Jesus got it right when he said, folks in hell, they ain't getting out. Their, their worm never dies, and the fire is never quenched. I know some of y'all think I'm hardcore, and I am. Amen. 
I'm serious about this. You might not be, but I am. Amen. Preach, See, this is why we cannot fellowship with just anybody. Because you might be participating in, in, in damnable, filthy, evil, corrupt doctrines. Yes, yes. So, you know, you got to ask for a doctrine statement. What do you believe? <laughs> yeah, Pastor, can I just feel that the preacher do well? First of all, God ain't led me. Amen. Amen. <laughs> then, second, what you believe? The brother in the Renaissance, we laugh about this, but it's really not funny. Preacher wanted to come preach at a church. So the pastor wrote, wrote back to this guy's secretary and said, well, we, we need a doctrinal statement before we let you preach it. The secretary didn't know what a doctrinal statement was. And so she went back to her pastor, and he's a bishop, and he didn't know what one was either. Amen. Amen. Now, if you don't know what a doctrinal statement is, you need to sit down. Amen. Amen. <laughs> See, that we, we can't fellowship with everybody. <coughs> Believing and following everything because we may end up participating in their evil deeds. Amen? Amen. 12, 13, and I'm through. John says, though I have many things to write to you, I do not want to do so with paper and ink, but I hope to come to you and speak to you what? Face to face. So what? So that your joy may be made full. The children of your chosen sister greet you. John had a lot more to say to this church, but he said, I don't want to do it with ink and paper or paper and ink. But he says, I want to come to you face to face in order that your joy may be full. I'm not going to get too dogmatic about my last point because I'm still praying through and asking the Holy Spirit to enlighten my mind. Mm -hmm. Therefore, not to be too dogmatic on this point or to paint everybody with the same brush, I really believe the point John makes in verse 12 addresses the live stream sermon in the branch franchise church today. Teach us. You got a lot of large churches and they're functioning like a bank. Amen. They got a primary headquarters and many branches spread throughout the community. Amen. Well, they operate like a franchise. All or most of the preaching and teaching the people get to attend the branch of the franchise church, it is live stream on a giant screen. I really believe what John says in this verse is something to teach us about this branch franchise church. Mm. For John understood in order for this congregation's joy to be full, he had to be there to teach them face to face. Amen. Yeah. Amen. I really believe the live stream sermon on the giant screen, it can be supplemental. Mm -hmm. If it's good teaching. But it is never a replacement for the local church pastor. Are you with me? It is never a replacement for the local church pastor ministering the word of God to his congregation face to face, person to person. For when a man is faithful in ministering the word of God to his congregation face to face, the joy of that congregation and the Lord, it can be made full. Yes, yes. Wow. John MacArthur is a tremendous Bible teacher. Oh, yeah. But he can't pass to you Amen. live stream. Amen. Amen. Well, Pastor, I get it live stream into my house. You need a local church. Yes. Yes. Where you can develop a relationship with a pastor face to face. Because it's only then that your joy in the Lord can be made full. Amen. Amen. So I'm not saying the live stream is wrong. I'm just saying you can't get to where you need to get with God if that's all you got. Yes. If you're sick and shut in, that's different. Mm -hmm. I'm real skeptical about the drive through church we got now. Amen. 
Get it your way. <laughs> Burger King type. Hold the pickle, hold the lettuce. <laughs> Special orders don't upset us. <laughs> Taylor May Church. Figuring out what the religious consumer wants and offering it to them. <laughs> you, you, you know, you don't have to, you can go over here and just get a live stream. Who was that? Was it was it was it Red Boy? One of them born brothers. He figured it out. Jeroboam, you ain't got to go to Jerusalem to worship. You ain't got to go there to go to church. We got a place over here. Amen. You ain't got to go to the priest and all off of your turn. You hear, hey, you guys got a long ways to go. So we got several worship centers here. A branch here and a branch there. And we got some golden calves. Amen. <laughs> So I think we need to think this thing through. Amen. Amen. Because we want our people's joy to be made full. Oh, yes. And in order for your joy to be made full, as John says, I got a lot of stuff I want to tell you, but I got to be there face to face in order that your joy can be made full. Amen. Yes. I challenge some of you to put this to the test. All of the sermons I preach are now downloaded to our website every week, www.wogccchurch.org. What a shameless plug, amen. <laughs> so when you cannot get to church, take time out and you can listen to the weekly sermon. But I guarantee you, it's not like being here. Amen. Every believer and every congregation needs a face-to-face -face relationship with a pastor, a man, who is called by God as a pastor teacher, who is faithfully ministering them the word of God at the Sunday worship service. Why? In order that their joy be made full. Amen? I'm Bruce, and I know y'all said that you didn't say it enough. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Amen. Amen. Lord, um, I want to be a faithful servant. I want to be a faithful son.